Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined, I think, for a fourth time by Leo Zagami to talk about his newest book, which is Confessions of Illuminati, Volume 9. Leo, what is going on, my brother? How are you? Very well, and I always got to be back. Uh, of course, I bring back every time a new book because uh, I've been uh, quite uh, prolific in publishing these books. So, and I think this book in particular, though, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit different from the others. And I think that... Uh, you, you have read it, so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you don't really need to read the other books to read uh, Volume 9. It has these uh, seven chapters uh, with these uh, seven steps to make you more and more aware of this new world disorder. But in reality, you can read it as a book of its own without the whole series uh, behind. Though, of course, it's better to know uh, my past work, uh, maybe for reference. But I think that my aim was to do something that uh, could be read by a lot of people that don't know my work. Uh, it's, uh, it's an urgent message, a message that needs to reach uh, a lot of people as soon as possible, as uh, you have seen yourself. And so I think that uh, uh, people are appreciating it. Uh, of course, uh, we are, uh, like we were saying just before going on the air, always submit uh, to a lot of censorship uh, and sabotage, even uh, on Amazon. You know, I have all five star reviews, but suddenly, out of nowhere, you have a one star review that is not even a review, just so they can get lower your, it's a your, scam, part, yeah. your, your yeah. rating, you know. Or, or uh, I remember the first couple of days, imagine this uh, I just came out with the book. And I was on, on a few of the Amazon charts, you know, I was number one in occultism, this and that and all the other. And suddenly I posted uh, on my wall and from out of nowhere, a bunch of trolls started attacking me, commenting me on, on, on the book without even having read the book. But this was never happened to me before. And it was like professors from leftist universities, people with Antifa <laughs> symbol, Antifa symbols on, on their Facebook. And I was like, wow. It's probably this- fake. It's probably, what, well, what do they call it? They call it AI bots that are simulating those actual personalities. It's insane. I mean, it's simulating, but definitely dissing me left, right, and center, trying sure. to sabotage my message and what I'm standing for. So I, I guess that when you start getting on the nerves of the system, you know that you are on the right path. You're in the car. You're exactly. You're, as I say, you're, you're directly over the target. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. So what was your uh, take uh, after reading your book? Uh, I mean, I think it's, I mean, I've read most of your books. Um, Like you said, I mean, it can be read standalone, but I mean, I said it was a riveting, you know, it's a masterpiece for sure, 100%. I've gotten a number of people to purchase it and read it. Thank you. Um, You you, you know, you're obviously a prolific author, as you said, and, and, and to be able to write a book, you know, this big and this prodigious and, and following, you know, seven and eight, which were also amazing books, you know, and, and to be able to do it as fast as you do it, it, it takes great creativity as an author myself. Obviously, my, I'm, I'm in the middle of a book launch myself right now. But um, I mean, I, honestly, like I told you, you know, and telling the audience, as always, you always have a positive message at the end. But this is very distressing stuff to read. And, you know, the truth is, Leo, and you and I know this, and my, thankfully most of my audience knows this, but not enough people understand what is going on. And it's mind-blowing, you know, to, 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 to read your book and to see how you factually document everything that's happening, you know. To- yeah, because I try to always stay – on my investigative journalist exactly. so that you know you need to be able to bring this information without being debunked in any way, shape, or form. So exactly. you need to 
bring this information with the correct sources, uh, with the correct references, uh, and the correct testimonies. So I, I think uh, that this has been done, and I, I haven't seen people debunking it or no. even criticizing it. Like I said, when they left the, re the one-star review, they, they haven't left a review, though. And so this is like, or, or the people who were attacking me and criticizing me, you know, uh, they, they couldn't find anything in the book to criticize. Then it starts to become just personal attacks on my persona or, of course. Uh, and things like that. So I, I think uh, that uh, we are right on target. Uh, we are also preparing uh, the people like me and you are preparing most people to become aware and get ready to eventually yeah. get off the grid and do maybe some changes in their life starting immediately. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, exactly. And you, and you have, all, you know, all this laid out in the book and, and, and as you always do, you organize your thoughts, you know, in a very clear, what I would say, cogent way. Uh, you know, I I've highlighted a number of sections, but I'm just going to let you do as you normally do on these podcasts and just go through. So our first point talking point is really, you know, kind of like a big picture aspect of things. And that's really the, what is their secret plan? So the secret plan of the elite and Ian, you know, call them the Illuminati Call them the cabal. Call them the the world new world disorder. I mean, there's so many names for these people. Klaus Schwab, and you know, mm -hmm. it, it's hilarious. You and I were talking about Elon Musk, or talking about PayPal, and, and you know, all these people think that Elon Musk is like some good guy. It's insane. It's literally insane. I know, I know, I know. And seeing what uh, PayPal does these days, you know, and the way they operate, I mean, it's just like. Uh, the, the, the worst uh, Orwellian nightmare. And, and, and if this gets uh, then adopted uh, as a standard by most platforms and even the banking system, like uh, it's over. Courage, uh, as, as outlined recently, then we find ourselves without any means to make any money yeah. and, and sustain ourselves. So definitely I urge people to uh, purchase our products, our books, uh, and, 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 and give us the support, even if uh, it's going to be increasingly difficult for us uh, to bring you this material. Uh, when it comes to the books, for example, I always suggest uh, people to purchase uh, the, um, the actual paperback, yeah, of course. or the archive, whatever is available in, in the shape of a real book, because when it comes to digital copies, you never know what's the future of the digital copy, especially in this book where I describe uh, the rise of cyber Satan through quantum computing, the way that transhumanism uh, yeah. is evolving uh, since we are embracing what Pierre Teller de Cardin, this uh, very influential Jesuit, used to call the Omega Point and what uh, Ray Kurzweil calls the singularity event. Yes. That, I mean, the biggest fans of this kind of things, the biggest fan is actually Elon Musk, <laughs> because he, he was actually, even like I write in my book, portrayed in a cameo uh, the, briefly in the film Transcendence with Johnny Depp. So people uh, tend to uh, really uh, believe that they can come, somebody, a savior can suddenly come through and, 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 and finally be just, you know, so they see... Elon Musk giving uh, Tucker Carlson the possibility of talking and doing his own show or, or doing other things with, uh, with uh, the former Twitter, now X as something positive. But in reality, it's just a way of, of uh, well, it's just a way of, of trying to appease and, 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 and make happy part of the population and at the same time, uh, playing this very ambiguous role in which right. he's, of course, the leader of the electric cars, which are part of the problem in our future grid of control. Of because course. Because that's really also another paradox. The Republicans, for example, are some of the biggest sustainers of the nuclear power. Of course. Which will sustain this whole electric grid. And, and I think that is demented. When we see what's happening with Fukushima, Fukushima, it's really incredible that the Republicans can have this kind of idea in their head. So uh, there is no really no solution, neither from the Republican uh, or, or the, the Democrats. So yesterday, for example, and, and of course, uh, people will see it in the coming days, uh, 
the GOP had their presidential debate and amongst all these candidates, you know, everybody was looking at this little Indian guy saying, wow, this guy's alternative. He's actually defending Trump. But then in reality, then the guy is supported by the Davos elite and by of Klaus course. Schwab. Of course. Yep. It's, it's, uh, like, you, like you say in the book, Operation Trojan Horse. It's always a Trojan horse. It's always a Trojan horse, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, you know, people uh, still uh, are going after uh, the, these traps. I mean, in my book, Volume 9, as you know, I explain how the AI is becoming protagonist also of all this fake news. Exactly. So, you know, uh, the, 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 the fact that uh, uh, with the AI, they can suddenly mm-hmm. substitute journalists that were mercenaries anyway, exactly. and they were just doing things because they were following an ideology, which is very robotic, if we want, in its approach. You, you either believe in their ideology or either you're out. Uh, so there is also a tendency to really uh, ridicule any conservative uh, uh, fought, uh, and, and this means that in the end they want to install a one party ideology in this exactly, case. just like they want to install eventually a one world government in the world. And, and, and all this uh, will eventually lead us though to the control made by the AI, the AI that is uh, uh, working behind the scenes and is rising, the AI that is developing. But uh, going back to step one of my confessions, as you know, I brought also for the first time out uh, the actual evidence that the Illuminati are working for transhumanism. And so I did it with a document from a guy who is a member of the Academy of the Illuminati, Dr. Nicholas Laus, uh, showing pics, photos, uh, documents. Uh, What did you think about that? I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I I, I wanted, as I was listening to you, I wanted to mention to you too that Let's not forget in chapter eight in Confessions, you talked about how the AI was simulating QAnon. And, you know, that whole like alternative truth side of the movement that people thought was actually taking place was also a Yeah, that is is something already, as you know, yeah, it was (laughs) point seven actually, where I. I'm sorry, seven. I thought it was eight. You're you're, you're so prolific. I can't keep it together. (laughs) <laughs> no, even but myself sometimes, you know. Psyop, they're, so they're, and you talk about this in all of your books, you know, what is now known as COINTELPRO. No, and so I, they're running both sides of the game, Leo. Yeah, no, but like I also, because that uh, thing you just said uh, about QAnon, which I denounced in volume seven, then it was something that I actually picked up again in volume nine because it was confirmed by you and Noah Arari who said himself that the QAnon could be seen as the first way of, you know, how the AI religions or political parties of the future will be formed. Because, you know, who tell us that this uh, whole QAnon thing wasn't simply AI generated and that's it? Because in the end, we never really had any evidence that there was a human behind it. No. And, no. And, and the results of it was that a bunch of people believed in all this and ended up attacking the cap, uh, going to the Capitol Hill protest that to fall into a trap. Yeah, exactly. Well, you you also proved though again, and I, I apologize, it was in chapter seven. It's crazy. I've read all your books, but uh, you did prove that the military invest you know the just call it the black budget all the stuff they were doing in the early 2000s was creating the technology that led to ai being able to create that basically psyop of simulated thoughts and and it gets really scarier though leo if we go deeper because you think about what it's doing now as it listens to us on our cell phones you know with our with the behaviorally advertise the behavioral ad targeting you know on all the social media networks i mean it literally is listening to our thoughts, it's observing our habits, and then it's creating predictability algorithms on what we're, what we are predicted or what we intend to do. It's almost like it's reading our minds. In fact, that's why I entitled the the second chapter, step two of my new book, volume nine, the advent, uh, the the first actually sub chapter of, of chapter two, the advent of the disinformation era, because, uh, it is really uh, this algorithmic 
mentality and morality that is uh, imposed on us by the system. The, and it's not even a human anymore that is dealing with the censorship. Most of the time, like we, like we know, it's an algorithm. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the AI. But this AI is also evolving. You know, it's increasing its power. And what's going to happen once they start with the, the quantum computing uh, and, and, and with these quantum computers immensely more powerful that could actually, like you said, read your mind, but it might, might actually happen with quantum computing. So, literally, literally. Literally. Yeah. So yeah. then at that point, you know, they simply observe our face, our expressions, and they know already where we are heading, what we are doing. And this is basically the moment in which uh, robotics uh, will take over the show because then you have AI, of course, but then you have the the, the, the robotic side of things, which yeah. is the, what they're going to use to implement all this. Yes. Yeah. And uh, recently, uh, I mean, as you know, in my book, I talk about Sophia, the robot. It's unreal. And, it's unreal. and just five years ago, Al Jazeera did an interview with Sophia, and she confirmed that the robots will take over, no problem, humanity. <laughs> years ago and nobody even knows but they're telling us in hollywood too with terminator and skynet yeah yes yes of yeah. course yeah. in the realm of fantasy of science fiction things have always been presented to us exactly so we could uh, gradually accept them and maybe not be threatened so much by them uh, and this is uh, something that i of course i also uh, expose in, uh, in in the past volume eight uh, when i talk about all the Hollywood involvement uh, and how it uh, and now actually uh, is paradoxically the, the, exactly. the actors and f the film directors are now striking because of the AI invasion of Hollywood exactly I exactly. mean uh, these people are a joke <laughs> you know, <laughs> because uh, they are basically working for Silicon Valley. Nowadays, Silicon Valley is some of the biggest producers of the movie business. So we're talking about Amazon, Apple, and, 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 and these companies are making TV formats, are making films, and they are, of course, uh, pro produce of, of, of the modern technology that is coming out, uh, that is AI-generated. So I think that with this book, first of all, I needed to show to the public, to the audience that follows us, that there is a reality here, which is connected directly with what we call the Illuminati, their Jesuit overlords and Sabbatian Frankist overlords, and how we are heading towards not only the AI disinformation era, which is already ongoing and, and we are living it already, but we're heading towards uh, uh, a world in which uh, our thoughts will become, of course, monitored through uh, the fact that we are embracing this uh, transhumanist aspect. We are starting to insert microchips. Just a few weeks ago, you saw here in America, it happened also in Italy, there was this lady who put all these microchips inside her so she could go to the supermarket and not, you know, and they think it's cool, you know, that you don't have to, you don't have to give your uh, your credit card or your bank card anymore because you simply pass it like this and you scan your. Yeah, it's insane, dude. I, I you saw that video, right? That was making the way on social media. Of that girl was so excited because she was scanning her hand. And I'm just yeah. sitting here thinking these people are retarded. It's Absolutely. like they're giving up their rights as sovereign individual humans. They have no idea what it entails. No idea. But I mean, again, this is the culture they they've created. This Leo, you know, all these. People, let's just, you know, and I don't want to pick on people under the age of 25, but, but if you're under the age of 25, you grew up with this in your hand. Yeah. And so that's all they know. They they know the screen that they, they, they don't read. They don't read books like you're of, of this magnitude. You know, they, they ask the computer, you know, Siri, Alexa, uh, Google the question. And, and we know it lies to them. <laughs> when it gives them the answer, it lies to them. <laughs> or... Uh they ask uh, the AI to read the books for that. Yeah, to tell right. me, you know, you haven't do, done an audio book, but I can still use uh, this program so to read the content from my... It's insane. And yeah. who knows, you know, how this content will be read. And so people need to really understand that they, they have to stay traditional when it comes down to reading. That's why, you know, we need to have 
our copies of our books, read them and understand them, and, and, and also uh, prepare ourselves because at the moment, uh, with this uh, farce regarding the war in Ukraine, we have uh, really uh, embraced a bunch of continuous lies and propaganda that are never ending, and that at the same time are pushing our economy uh, to, to new levels uh, of, of inflation. Yeah. Uh, why? Because we have to support uh, some country in Eastern Europe uh, that, that, that in any case was never ours and was always under the control of Russia historically for, for, for centuries. So, I mean, it's, it's and, 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 in, and in my book, I also explain like, uh, I mean, I don't think any other author has done that, but since the 1820s, how various secret societies have yeah. artificially created the Ukrainian identity. That's exactly right. Didn't even That's exist, right. the word Ukrainian. It was actually, they were known as Rutanians. <laughs> you know, do, do you think, Leo, you know, you kind of get into this, but you, you, you know, it's, it, this would be like a rabbit hole, but do you think that this is really just some sort of giant secret society uh, war? amongst themselves that you know that's what the ukraine war really is that, that you know these elites are just warring among themselves in some way shape or form well i think that in the end here uh, and i described this already from volume seven i yeah. explained how the sino russian new world order is of course trying to take control of this uh, new world order but uh, uh, whoever you have, either it's the Sino-Russian New World Order, either it's the American New World Order, is a little bit like the same car driven by different uh, right. uh, uh, different pilots, different, different people who are driving this car, different drivers. But in reality, the car is always the same. So <laughs> they, they, they are trying to show that their model, maybe, their, their car has a better <laughs> model, maybe. That is, you know, I mean... We want it like this, rather this color rather than that color. You know, we prefer it red rather than blue or blue rather than red. But I think that in the end, when it comes, for example, to the BRICS, and we have seen the last few days since the BRICS uh, um, meeting has started in South, uh, in South Africa, uh, we see that, uh, whom, whom, you know, there is various degrees of ambivalence here, you know, like India, it's kind of friendly with America. The guy comes here, and, you know, all friendly. And then in the end, he's also friendly with Russia, but then also is worried of China, but stands in the BRICS, which is an alliance which sees mainly Russia and China as their main driving force. I mean, it's all very, it's like the, 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 there is not really any honesty here. There is no. just a group of people that once they arrive in power, they are counting less and less, and, and, and they're becoming then, you know, uh, controlled by institutions from the United Nations, uh, which are held by people who are never elected, they're bureaucrats, and who have institutions uh, like the WHO or uh, the, the, the FAO for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and other institutions, and all the various NGOs created alongside the United Nations that are all part of the, and, and when you say secret society, well, uh, I mean, uh, of course, people these days uh, know Freemasonry, but Freemasonry is not really a secret society. There is societies that are much more secret than that. Uh, right, right, uh, right. Than, 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 than right. Freemasonry. But, but in any case, uh, uh, we can say that, uh, and I, of course, say that in the book very clearly, there is... Uh, on top of this pyramid, two factions. And one is uh, the Jesuits, right. and the other one is uh, the Sabbatian Frankists. And these factions uh, are then manipulating all the various secret societies of what we generally refer to as the Illuminati. Yeah. Um, and then you have the influence of the Theosophical Society in all this, which is a very big influence. And Madame Blavatsky herself who was born in Ukraine, for those who don't know it, because sometimes uh, people don't know that. And Ukraine actually has a lot of, uh, of things that are wrong, aside from the war. The war I mean, they have brought uh, something like uh, theosophy to the world, which yeah. actually became 
after the the playground for all the modern satanists. So, I was going to say it's Satanism. It, it, it's it's in disguise. It's all. It, it was always that way, though. I mean, even when you know, um, not Alex Huxley, but uh, Alex Sir Crowley. You know, you know, all the things that he was doing was all a, an offshoot of that. All of these people, and, and look, you know, whether they were misguided and initially started off as benevolent at least attempting and then they were misguided and thrown off and who knows i mean obviously alistair Crowley. I, I think that you know when for example in my book i talk about this gnosticism that yeah. they have kind of promoted and then picking up from spiritism which became really influential before ufology, you had spiritism. And right. It was really popular, you know, and people were really into it. But uh, uh, spiritism uh, communicates a lot of lies because when you communicate with the spirits that are often demons, you are basically uh, getting uh, your, your truths from, from a rotten source. So right. you can never <laughs> accept this, uh, these people as, as bringing you anything that is reliable. If that's the source, I, w- I want to read this to you because this is your quote in the book, and I, you know, I highlighted this. You said, "As a former occultist and Illuminati, with the direct experience in these matters, I tend to disagree with obviously Timothy Alberito's take on these on this specific subject, as I think there are material objects, aka UFOs, which fly or materialize in our reality, and it does not contradict in any way, shape, or form the interdimensional hypothesis of like Jacques Vallee." Or the possibility that the alien abductees are actually dealing in many cases with interdimensional demons who are also extraterrestrials or former ones after becoming fallen angels. I, when I read that quote, I was like, ah, he just knocked it out of the park with that right there. But can you kind of just like elaborate on that? Like yeah. how crazy is it right now from like a, you know, a paranormal First of all, you know, I mean, Timothy is an old friend. He came to Italy. We did this documentary together, and he has made a book which I find very interesting yeah. because it, it, it also um, elaborates a lot around the new Atlantean world order sure. and everything in it. So, but his view is 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 like uh, you know, it's like compartmentalized. Sure. The ufologists tend to be very compartmentalized, as most people who are involved in so-called conspiracy theories or the so-called truth movement. Right. They accept <laughs> only one version of the truth. Right. And by accepting only one version of the truth, saying that, oh, UFOs, they can either be extraterrestrial or interdimensional. Right. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. If you are extraterrestrial and if you have managed to make it all the way here, you, you have also sure dimensional. <laughs> you are also yeah. able to go through the through the various dimensions because you have mastered the multidimensionality. That of, of course. course. So I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. And the same can be said for many other things. You know, like the people who say, "Oh no, this world is ruled only by Jewish people." Wow, or only by the Vatican, only, by, and I tend to agree with maybe the person for a second, but then I tell I tell him there is also the full truth, the full picture is not so black and white. There is some gray areas, and there is also different groups that are operating, like you just said earlier. When it comes to Ukraine, it becomes then a war that has various interests and that various bands, gangs of the New World Order, and they really act like mobsters. Watch the way Joe Biden acted in Absolutely. Ukraine. Absolutely. Like a mobster. Absolutely. And the same can be said, of course, for, for Vladimir Putin or for Zelensky. These people are, are all mobsters in the end, the right. way they're acting. Right, right. So, but- to actually bring them on a pedestal and say, oh, well, I follow him because he is in the ethical and moral, you know, he has the ethical and moral authority while the others doesn't, that don't have. Well, I mean, uh, no, it doesn't work that way. So, well, me, I, well, 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 to that point, but let, let's go deeper and unpack this. Um, Obama, the Clintons, the yes. Bushes, all of these puppet leaders. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor 
about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. You have to understand that they don't really want to have many Klaus Schwab. Right. Because they don't want to have many Davoses. They have one Davos. They have one, you know, the, the World Economic Forum. They have one Club of Rome. They have one Bilderberg. They are all compartmentalized, but they are all part of this uh, uh, new world disorder. And they all work together and collaborate uh, along with the plan. And the plan is to eliminate part of humanity now that they exactly. have, the, the, you know, the robots available. They don't need us anymore. And, 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 and they can also uh, continue their life uh, in a very exclusive way where, while we are forced to eat bugs, uh, eat the bugs. And, uh, but w w what is your, your question? Uh, well, so you like when, when, when someone like him meets, who are, are they? I mean, again, it's, it's a supposition question. Yeah. It's your opinion. But are they, do these people meet with interdimensional fallen angel okay. type beings? Very good question. Very good question that needs uh, to have a, a very precise and concise answer. When I divide the New World Order, as you see, I always divide it with two factions, the Jesuit and the Sabbatian Frankist. Yeah. I always divide this, fa and, and I explain the role of the Sabbatian Frankis within the economic uh, uh, setup and also, of course, sure. like explaining volume eight, the fact that they're involved in the show business. Uh, and then you have, of course, uh, the Jesuits who are involved in the creation of the one world religion, and right. they are the experts of the occult. Of course. So it's not the person like Klaus Schwab who actually tends to deal with socio-political issues uh, at a geopolitical level, right. who actually connect with these entities. But it's rather the Jesuits. He doesn't go that, I mean, and, and then he invited the Red Bishop Camara, uh, so-called Red Bishop, uh, who, who had made that pact of the catacombs uh, in, uh, nine, in December 1965 to Davos. So it's like, the business side of things deals with the, their own materialistic realm. They leave the connection with the other realm to other people. However, like uh, I explained in volume nine of my confessions, then we have the whole subject of reverse engineering. Right. Which is, though, something that is done in a top secret kind of environment. It's, uh, it's something that... Uh, it's, uh, of course, dangerous for human, for human beings because eventually everything that we are using uh, through this reverse engineering means that it's a Trojan horse that sure. has been put in our hands with the specific uh, aim, which is to cage us in this digital gulag. So the Klaus Schwab's of the world rarely go to the extent of doing uh, evocations right, or right, evocations. Right, right, right. Right. Of, of, of some entity, because in their own uh, um, in their own compartmentalized world, they take control of certain things rather than others. But now That's things right. are, of course, coming all together. Because the moment in which you have a reality like quantum computing that is basically literally connecting with the invisible world yes. that, that they have reverse engineer all this and that basically this multidimensional the invisible the, masters as you call them yes yeah. as i call them also in that uh, book invisible master well at that point then uh, the situation is a little bit different but remember <laughs> the, the 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 actual contact that is done with these entities just like i said in the invisible master is uh, uh, between the religious leaders and the leaders, uh, the spiritual, between brackets, the leaders of Freemasonry, for example, yeah. or many other secret societies. Yeah. But uh, those, uh, the, the, those people do it at times very much in secret. And then when it comes down to the Theosophical Society, then they filter down through organizations in the United Nations, their right. idea, and they tell them, you have to do this, you have to do that. Then they gather, like I explained in volume nine of my confessions, their egregor, thanks to this giant magnet uh, in the meditation room of the United Nations, and that's where the egregor resides. 
But uh, the, the, the actual United Nations, like I explained in Volume 9, came together with a big involvement by the Theosophical Society, yeah. later on also by the Lucius Strass. Yeah, so do you think the egregore is like a demonic-looking being? Like if you would actually see it materialize in th- third-dimensional reality? Would it no, the like- egregore in itself uh, is not uh, necessarily good or bad. It depends who puts together the fourth form and feeds this entity. Right. You know, because uh, we could call the egregore of a church then uh, something positive if the sure. members of the church are, con- are gathering together to pray in- Right and, and towards God, and sure. they're feeding a angelic egregore in that case, something divine egregore. But the people who are in a satanic contest, who are, for example, in the meditation room of the United Nations or in a Masonic lodge, which is which maybe has the presence of some evil individuals, then that egregore becomes, of course, uh, polluted, uh, becomes vampiric. Then the egregore can live can live even a life of its own once. Right, it's exactly. Used. Yeah. And if yeah. you if you say it can materialize in a being, well, uh, the thing is that at times uh, there is entities that uh, uh, intercept and work with these egregores to absorb the energy. Right. Right. And they feed these entities deliberately, like they feel they feel the Moloch through human sacrifice, right. child sacrifices. Right. 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 And, and and then of course. Uh, that is uh, uh, also their power. That's why it's very important also to realize that even if we are in a modern world where you have the Klaus Schwab uh, looking yeah. all uh, cool and all the people, uh, but those people then on the side know about uh, the multidimensionality, about right. the entities. And so what do they do? They tend to... Uh, have their own shaman, their own witch doctor, their own uh, occultist of reference, who right. will do the dirty deeds of contact for them or whatever. That's or right. Like you know, when when they require some very powerful favor, they will then even indulge in animal, even human sacrifice. And 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 I think that, like I said in volume eight of my confessions, when it comes out to Oprah Winfrey. Uh, probably that connection uh, ruined for her even the possibility of ever. Uh, uh, getting uh, anywhere near politics because she's uh, her stench uh, of uh, of compromise is 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 is, is way too, too big and I think that it's also what we see recently now with the fact that she has a thousand acres acres in Maui and everything incredible else. these people are uh, people that are corrupt but also that see That's themselves true. as the elite. And what does the elite want to do? I explain in volume nine, and as you know, it's very important, their golden age, because their idea of a golden age is is that basically uh, it's the old Atlantean idea, the golden age, you know, we will reach a new golden age. And they want to reach it through the AI that in their eyes will make them immortal, either through singularity. Yep. Either from nanotechnology inserted in your body that will bring us uh, to immortality by cancer, by destroying our cancerous cells and doing all kinds of things that there, uh, or otherwise even through mind upload, mind transfer. Right, which mind tra- conscious tomorrow. transfer. You talk about conscious transfer. It's already happened. Yes. It's literally already happened. Yes. And and, and there is uh, some rich people that are already uh in, indulging in all these possibilities, especially yeah. when they reach a certain age, you know, like cryonics and having uh, their body frozen. But then what did they do with their mind? They upload it onto uh, uh, an AI. Do they become part of the quantum computing reality, which will also start at the digital divide? Because uh, when we will, uh, and this is, uh, as you know, uh, one of the topics in my new book, when you have a computer that costs millions of dollars that can only be cooled by helium and it's only in the hands of billionaires, right? well, those people have an immense pa- power, especially when when this computing power can break into your blockchain in a second and can destroy your whole cri- crypto nonsense. There's no, there's no cryptography that it can withstand. It'll knock through anything in seconds. Yeah, yeah so that is a warning that we need to make now to all the people who in the last few years have indulged in any way in, in cryptocurrency, thinking that, uh, you know, it would be it's safe, safe <laughs> uh, or maybe, 
you know, they, these days they say, well, it's actually safer than CBDC, you know, that the, 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 the central digital banking system that is coming together. No, there is nothing safe. No. There's nothing it's crazy. Safe. It's literally crazy. When they tell me that, I laugh. Whenever I hear them tell me that, you know, and I'm not going to be, I, you know, I've been open about this. You know, I've invested in cryptocurrency as a hedge. Right for sure, for sure. for fiat going down. I mean, I've I played the game, but I mean, give me a break. If you don't think that the same, you know, well, if you if you have invested, I would say that the next few years is the moment to disinvest whatever. To get you out. Invest, yeah, exactly. Get out. I mean, exactly. I, I personally myself, I stopped investing in crypto three years ago. Yeah, uh, when uh, the, the the various governments, including the U.S. government, starting the idea that they should all be taxed in any way, it wasn't anymore <laughs> the free form of currency that you had the once upon a time. So there was no point in continuing. No, no. Uh, it's and, a honeypot and- now. I look at it as a honeypot. Like they're marking the people that have massive volumes or pools of it. And they're going to just go after them at some point and say, you owe us all this money in, in taxes because you never paid taxes. Because a lot of these people, as you know, Leo, they're not even paying taxes. They just live off the grid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and so, they, 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 you know, they have the crazy idea that the crypto will be this. I never really, you know, I could have had the possibility of investing 10 years ago in crypto. And I refused it 10 years Me ago. Me too. Me too. Uh, Me too. Then, and maybe I could have made really a lot of money because, yeah. you know, when, when they give you crypto for $5 each, I mean, then of course uh, you see what is worth now. Right. I could have become a millionaire, but I refused it because there was something that just didn't, this, this I, I don't know. It didn't, I, at the time I was connected to these people in the pirate party that started in Sweden. They were all kind of, you know, People are uh, involved uh, with uh, with the internet and technology and stuff, and they made me this offer, but I refused it. And then later on, maybe around 2018, 19, we just had the idea of investing a few thousand just to see how it goes. And then, you know, because of, of a relative who gave us some, uh, you know, we said, okay, let's let's have a laugh and, and, and invest a little bit. But immediately after we saw that uh, that the whole thing was uh, was it's a manipulation it's a giant a, manipulation a, a giant yeah. manipulation and it wasn't worth the, the the effort so i mean look i'll i'll tell you this this is my opinion but i mean i think it'll eventually be proven true i think it was started by the alphabet agencies literally it's possible because the whole starting of it as you know is surrounded in myth with this japanese guy and the whole story sakatoshi <laughs> Whatever it sounds like, uh, really, some, I mean, a little bit too. Yeah, it's, it's, there's not there is something wrong about it, and and I remember when they asked my opinion, I was at Infowars. I remember doing a show there, and they asked my opinion. I said maybe a few years ago it could have been a, a good investment, but now I don't see it anymore. Like no, that. no, no. I don't see it anymore like that. No, and, no. and I think that it is another way of simply caging people. Yeah, in exactly. Gulag, exactly. Which in the end will put them in total control of you. So the moment in which you think in the wrong way, well, don't think that way because, you know, immediately you will have to, it's like your pocket, you know, you, you have money in your pocket. And exactly. Exactly. You have, that's what I've always, but I've always said that Leo is like, why would they be taking away paper currency unless it wasn't ultimately because they can't control the influx and outflux of paper currency, like they can control digital currency. And as you know, they can just cut you off. Got you. And, and and then you, you, you are, you know, basically in, in the hands of the system, they already started to do that in yeah. a way, you know, with the, 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 the yeah. banking cartel and with yeah. all the various cards that they could switch on and off at their, uh, you know, tell you, ah, okay, you're not any longer on the Visa, on the MasterCard or whatever. Right. But it's yeah. going to be increasingly like this. So in the end, I think that only gold can be a long uh, time uh, kind of uh, commodity that you can keep but everything else is a little bit. Uh, the only the only oh, problem yeah. with with precious assets or, or currency assets like gold or silver is carrying them around. 
They're so heavy. What are you going to do? Like if you're going into the mountains, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? Put it in a, in a wheelbarrow and just push it. I mean, I, I'm with you, but uh, I don't know. It's We're in very interesting times. I do want to ask you because we were talking off air. Um, you know, today's – August 24th. And there's already now all sorts of threats of, you know, Alex Jones, who's friends of both of us, you know, is already saying that he's been told by Homeland Security and DHS members that they've already been given marching orders that they're going to shut everything down. Yeah. Do you, you know, and again, estimate is end of September into October. I have friends who have also been told by various government agencies. I mean, Leo, there's stuff going around on the internet right now where Target and Walmart are already building giant drop-off uh, centers in their parking lots all across the country. So you know they always know. The corporations are behind all of this AI, the cyber Satan. But do you think – do you do you think – and I, it's an opinion question. Is this our time when they do this bullshit again to stand up and say no and to not comply? I mean it, do, do you recommend people – do that at this point because that's where it's going to right masks on planes. absolutely we never complied from the start uh, with all this uh, mandates and stuff i mean uh, especially here in the u.s we were yes. capable of avoiding uh, yes. a lot of the oppression which instead was impossible to avoid in countries like italy where you had to actually write where you were going uh, during the you know that was insane i mean that is literally uh, insane. Or, or, or you 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 had to show this uh, vaccine passport everywhere but i mean even here in the u.s you had to but here in the u.s a lot of them were fake were forged where people exactly. were just uh, you know saying okay yeah don't worry I have <laughs> this, uh, and uh, you got and let me into your restaurant or let me into your and, but but were, instead, in Europe, it was all already digital. It was all connected. Into yeah, there was no way. It was all QR codes, right? QR codes, phones, stuff. And, and you couldn't get out of that uh, matrix. It was already. So I hope that sincerely there will be resistance. There has to be. There has to be. Resistance. But uh, resistance has to be at the global level. Yes, yes. And unfortunately, there is... Uh, uh, other countries that don't have weapons, don't have the possibility of defending themselves, don't have the, against the tyranny of their governments, right. and uh, and so that's that's something we we need to address. But having said that, I think that if they do something like this, they do it mainly because of the next elections. They do it because paper ballots, paper ballots, right? Yes. They want more. Yeah, yeah they, they want to get want rid of ballots. ballots. They want yeah. people to to go back into that whole mode in which you know, and then at that point, boom, out of you know, just like a rabbit out of the magician's illusion, <laughs> you have uh, again Joe Biden. I mean, Joe <laughs> Biden, wow. That's an old rabbit. There's no way, Leo, <laughs> the American public is going to fall for that bullshit again. I mean, I, look, I'll just say it right now. I mean, and, and my listeners and my audience knows, like, I feel that if that attempt, if they attempt to do that again, we're going into a revolution in the United States. But that is one of the possibilities which I've been talking about for years. Now, I hope that uh, at least I can become American before all this happens, because I'm getting my American <laughs> citizenship by the end of the year. That's awesome, man. Good but, for you. Good but for you. I'm, I'm actually... Very lucky because I was the last person to receive a green card without having to do this terrible vaccine, uh, wow. COVID vaccine. So I was like pretty lucky on that one. Good but having said that, uh, if it happens again, of course we don't have to comply. But then at that point, we, we, we really have to demand ourselves, what is the next thing that we have to do? Right. The next thing that we have to do is to construct, like just like I suggested from volume seven of yes. my confessions with the great reject, a alternative community. Yes. And, and, and in this alternative community, then we... I, I'm pretty sure, like I said the other times, that the cities are no longer safe. So... It is important to move as far as as far away as you can from the big cities, because either they are Democrat control or Republican control, or major cities at the moment seem to be going in a, the wrong direction. Apart from the fact that there is no Republican controlled city, because all major cities are controlled. By, sorry, uh, any Republican controlled city, because there's all Democrats are ruling the cities, and they're ruling the cities because the cities are the hubs for the smart world of the future right. that they are constructing, whereby 
they will leave the useless cars like us, the deplorables uh, like Hillary called us, living in the outskirts. Well, they, they will go perfectioning this controlling model within the environment of the cities. So they will continue and increase their Orwellian nightmare within the cities, but uh, then it depends from us. Are we going to be depending still from the cities? Are, are, are we, at one point, we will have to go, and when I say I'll go off the grid, there will be a moment in which we will not be able to interact, in, even be present in their... Uh, That's in exactly their, right. That's because, exactly you right. Because, you know, it will be... They will require you to vaccinate as soon as you get go to a major city. You have a series oh, of yeah. requirements. So then you have facial control, everything. And so well, how are you going to escape that? I mean, no, no one's going to. I mean, and, and that's why I keep saying, like, you know, all the people that are still living in the major blue check cities like Los Angeles and New York City and San Francisco and all these places, like, they're fucked. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. What, what are you going to do? And, and, and like I showed in, in my book it's like a Faustinian bargain that has been made by these people uh, yeah. for implementing uh, this uh, scientific or technological society and uh, there is uh, the crazy thing is uh, that they have chose as the digital country of the future Ukraine Ukraine is going to be the country of the future simply That's because a it's not. coincidence, right? <laughs> yeah, no. But it's going to become the, the country of the future in the digital world or in the metaverse, but it's not going to exist anymore in the real world. That's the, the truth. Because once it's bombed, nuclear bomb, that country is finished because that country relies only on agriculture. That is their main thing. And, of course... Uh, they want to get back to the Donbass areas because there is also precious minerals and stuff like that. But their main uh, scope of the economy of Ukraine is all f on grain, fertilizers. They, they pr this is what they produce. They produce stuff that once you drop a nuclear bomb or you get Zaporizhia nuclear uh, plant to explode, well, that's it. It's finito. So they are, of course, they have, like I explained in my book, they have created this uh, uh, digital country. And it's quite crazy how they have done it now with this app that they started before even uh, the beginning of the military operation from Vladimir Putin in 2022. They started this in 2020 with the D app, which means that everything you have money, uh, documents, everything is in one app. And the Ukrainian citizens uh, basically go around without any documents apart from the smartphones. And uh, they have a minister uh, that is in charge of this digital uh, evolution, uh, this uh, guy who is basically in charge of uh, uh, developing this whole thing, which is the Minister of Digital Transformation, a guy called Michael Federov, and they are basically developing the idea that they can become the first digital country in the world, and they can bring maybe Silicon Valley and everybody else to move over there in Ukraine once the war is, is, is successfully won by them, which is insane and never going to happen. Insane. Literally insane. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. I mean, look, I think it's obvious. Let's just be, I mean, let's just be honest. This whole Ukraine bullshit that, as you know, and you talked about in chapter eight, started immediately to end the COVID nonsense. Like it went from the COVID nonsense to the Ukraine nonsense. And now knowing what we know about the digital country or the first digital country, that's the whole impetus of this. They, they created that as a sleight of hand, again, the Trojan horse to create the digital country as the footprint for the rest. That's what they did. 
yeah, uh, it's like they they they, they, they created this uh, this uh, this this monstrosity, this digital country monstrosity, but they are proud of it because they of think course. you know. We are the, you know, Davos has called them the digital tiger, and they are <laughs> proud of it. Uh, Klaus Davos. Oh, they are proud of being the digital tiger. Well, instead, the reality is that these people are actually enslaved, imprisoned by a digital grid. They will never be able, I mean, people at the moment who are in Ukraine, first of all, we have seen also the limits of this country you now with the corruption in the enrolling the the, the in the enrollment the, 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 there's been a lot of arrest recently with people who were pros, the proscripts who went to these offices and instead of going to war they will end up paying and, and managing to get out of the country because if you're a man from you know from 18 to 60 you can't a- exit ukraine at the moment you are trapped literally in that country and you have to fight for your country but it's this unbelievable it's it's it's, it's like a, a, a prison right that, you know these people are forced into fight by a system which is corrupt i don't understand how the ukrainians can take this nonsense but they have been brainwashed right, so exactly. much right yeah you know and from 2014, like I, in, in my book, I show that basically in 2014, the revolution of dignity was the, pro, was the product of a Masonic revolution that started in the 1990s when the first Freemasons were made in Ukraine by an Italian grandmaster who then became the grandmaster of the Illuminati, Giuliano Di Bernardo. And so I even show, you know, with the documentation that this has been going on and the, how the actual Ukrainian elite was built. Yeah. There is uh, the city of Odessa, for example, which is the city where the Grand Master of the Ukrainian Freemasons reside. Has this city been invaded by Russia yet? No. Of course not. <laughs> It's a coincidence. It's a coincidence. It's Just a coincidence. like Oprah's houses weren't bombed in Maui. It's a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sometimes they send them some, you know, they send them some missile, something, but I ne- nobody really understands how it's possible. Then a place like Odessa, which technically it's on the sea, which is at the moment patrolled by the Russian Navy. It's a, it, Odessa, which, by the way, could be actually taken very easily because behind all this uh, if you go on the uh, on the uh, on the west well you have also moldova and you have transnistria which is already occupied by russian forces so it will not take that much to really arrive and take all this but like we said uh, nothing happens because uh, that's how it is. It's the miracles of, uh, of, of of war and of Freemasonry being so powerful in that city. So I wanted to explain people also who were the architects of this whole war with Russia and what went behind the scenes, uh, what goes on behind the scenes also in Russia, where you have Freemasonry that works with the Russian state. Recently, when it was in June, the Russian grandmaster was... Uh, uh, I think in June or July, he was in Brazil, which is one of the countries of BRICS. Right. The Russian Grandmaster was recently at that meeting they did in St. Petersburg with all the Russia, with all the African countries, and he was present there, Bogdanov, the Russian Grandmaster. So, I mean, they work hand in hand, the Russian Freemasonry with the Vladimir Putin, and there is no problem. At the same time, of course, the Ukrainian Grandmaster has said that they don't recognize it, that they have, uh, you know, some uh, squabbles between each other and all that. But aside from all these squabbles uh, in the outside world, uh, then behind the scenes, in the end, uh, these billionaires, uh, they all agree on wanting to create an elite that survives the next decades, while the majority of people are led into ruins and have to survive into the ruins of this society, or either they have to survive with, 
with all the compromises of the new generations, because the new generations, the millennials, are the ones that are brainwashed uh, already, and they have, like you said earlier, the mobile phones always in their hands, and they are always basically, they, they don't watch the outside world with the same eyes anymore. And soon they will be probably caged into virtual reality or augmented glasses. And so they will be completely viewing the reality through the AI. The AI in the meantime is being fed by uh, social networks like TikTok, which uh, apart from the fact that they bring down your mental level, because if you start watching TikTok, you become demented. No? But TikTok is the produce. Like yesterday... Yesterday evening, the most incredible thing happened. There was, uh, as you know, the presidential candidates for the GOP, no? And at one point, uh, there was a pause for the breaks, uh, a publicity break on uh, with the usual ads. And there was the ad of TikTok. Yeah, of course. On Fox News. These people up until a minute before they were talking against China and all the various uh, presidential candidates, no, China this, China that. Huh? And then after you have the ad with TikTok. Boom. Yeah, it's all lies. All and lies. Complete BS. Complete. Yep. Like I you know, said, it's that. one giant Trojan horse. They, I mean, they I was control watching both this. sides. Are you watching this? They're showing an ad of TikTok on the uh, Fox <laughs> TV people. TikTok was supposed to be banned a few months ago. You know, first it was Trump who wanted to ban it, right? And, and nothing happened. Then a few months ago, everybody started banning TikTok. What happened? It's still there. Nobody has done anything. No, no. And the same thing can be said also when when it comes to China. You know, China is is of course interested in invading uh, uh, Taiwan. Is supporting Russia. But there will be, and it's of course invading our country with fentanyl, which is given to the Mexican cartels, but nothing happens. There is a lot of talk, a lot of talk. And so the common person thinks there is almost no possibility of fighting this system. There is almost no, no, no. but instead, you know, unity means strength and, and people who are like-minded like us, if we were really aware of things, and we are now, then we need to act, and we need to act fast to protect our interests and our future in generations that, uh, of course, uh, need to be also protected by all this. So, first of all, we can't send our children to schools or universities that no. are connected with the system. No, no. They're all, they're all indoctrination centers. Yeah, indoctrination centers, and nothing good comes out of it. <laughs> In my latest book, though, as you know, I also, for the first time, expose also how these people have used Jesus and, the, and, 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 and his teachings at their advantage, and they have also polluted them with their so-called Gnosticism. It's insane. Insane. And people don't understand how dangerous that is. But in reality... Even their, you know, uh, all their occult practices are all connected to these Gnostics. Yeah. And, and even, but even Leo, as you said in the book, in, in the biggest chapter, you know, you even argued that the true Gnostic teachings were, is, were also convert, uh, polluted. They've polluted everything. We don't even know what is what. Everything is so polluted and inverted. It's insane. It's impossible to find out what is even real. Yeah, yeah. In fact, in, in, in chapter five of my confession, I really took three characters. One is Adam Weishaupt, who is the grandmaster of the Illuminati. The other one is um, Albert Pike, who is the great yeah. reformer of the Scottish Rite. And then uh, John Yarker, who was also the guy who uh, kind of uh, hold together the ancient and primitive rite of Memphis and Mizraim. These three figures that might not be so well known by the outside world, uh, they have played a very important role in the Illuminati and in secret societies that we commonly refer as the Illuminati and in Freemasonry. And what they did was, uh, since the time of Adam Vesha, Vesha was the guy who 
who everybody remembers because, of course, of the conspiracy role, yeah. because he instigated conspiracy against governments, uh, sabotaging uh, where, where possible or monarchies, absolute monarchies, uh, or religions, uh, wanting to destroy religions. And okay, we, we know all that. But we don't know that he was actually in secret claiming that he was promoting real Christianity and that, he, you know, that's insane. And that, you know, he had the real teachings of Jesus and that you had to listen to what the Illuminati were teaching in their lodges to have the real teachings of Jesus. Unreal. He yeah. came then adopted by the rest of Freemasons. In fact, Albert Pike makes a similar assertion and yeah. John kept the same. So these people have claimed uh, and Freemasonry, as you know, is one of the most influential uh, still institution, even if uh, they might not be as influential as they used to, because now there is a lot of uh, think tanks, uh, like right. uh, places like Davos, the, 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 that might be more fashionable and more exclusive, or secret societies like the Skull and Bones and others. But the thing is uh, that in Freemasonry, they basically teach in certain, uh, like the, the instructions of Albert Pike and in many rites, they teach that basically they are the ones who hold the keys to the real secrets of Jesus. Exactly. And that is a really a lie of Poor. immense proportions yeah. uh, that they are pushing. So then, you know, by pushing all this stuff, in the end, with all these Gnosticism, what do we learn? What is the ultimate aim of the Gnostics? And we learn that ultimately their aim is to become God. Right, right. Which is not a very Christian thing. No, no. Okay, we, we might want to embrace Jesus uh, and, and be living uh, in, in his light, uh, uh, drawn by his inspiration constantly. And, and, and of course, we would like to have God in our life constantly. But it doesn't mean that we are gods. Right. It doesn't mean that I wake up tomorrow morning and I have the power of life and death on all creatures, right. and I can decide the future for everybody else. But that's what they believe. So right. their idea for the elite is to become these uh, gods on earth. Yeah. Almost like the philosopher kings right. of... Uh, Immor of basically immortal beings you know, merged with AI, yeah. transhumanist cyborgs. That's what they want that can uh, enslave uh, the rest of humanity and gradually eliminate it. Because it's not right. only about enslaving. This is important uh, that people need to understand. It's not uh, really only about uh, enslaving, but it's about also eliminating them. That's exactly so, yes, right. It's about, like you and Harari, we give you, for the moment, to the useless class, computer, video games, and drugs. It's a useless class, right? You'll have bugs and you'll be happy. You'll be happy and at the same time you play video games and drug and do drugs and you're happy too. This is unfortunate because a lot of people these days tend to uh, fall for this uh, kind of thing and they end up living their life like bums, wake up in the morning and go... To bed right. in the evening that's, what, that's, what that's the that's the part of the show right they want them hooked into the metaverse getting fifteen hundred dollars a month in basic income and not having to work <laughs> yeah. well because you know they think that the universal basic income will be the way to at least avoid the revolution so you, you see the, the the universal basic income is something that at the moment is being proposed and is being pushed in many countries in the world, simply because they say, oh, well, you know, with the advent of robotics and AI, we will have to rediscuss the whole environment of, uh, of human beings uh, in their working places. But in the end, they will be sided more and more until at one point the robots will say, we have taken over the show. It's insanity, Leo. It's complete insanity. And the fact that more people don't see this, although I do think... We talked about this on our last podcast. There are more people waking up, and obviously, your book helps people wake up. I mean, they have to read oh. it. I mean, you know, but it's but but it's honest. Well, let me just let me let me throw up your uh, website real quick here, and then I really my really final question for you is: What's next for you? Are you writing part ten? I mean, can you just keep writing these, or at some point, do you think that there's nothing left to write? You've you've unriddled mm -hmm. and unhacked the codes. 
Now, I think uh, that it's important uh, that uh, to write, you have to have the inspiration of God. Now, of uh, volume nine in particular is uh, the, uh, the, the first book that I actually dedicate to God. And so I felt uh, almost like a sense of responsibility in putting together this book in a certain way. So uh, it could be understood by everybody. It can be also uh, a, a way of building maybe a better future for many people. I did uh, also uh, write the other books, of course, uh, by inspiration. So it all depends from the inspiration that you sure. get. Now, my focus uh, is to uh, write a book for 2024 and for the presidential game that we are about to, to all witness. I think that would be a good idea. But having said that, you know, God at times just, you know, comes uh, to yeah, me it's inspiration. And, sure. and in this passage it says, you know, you, you need to follow that track and you need to, and then I, I start. And, and I hope that God blesses me with much more inspiration because I, I feel like uh, my mission is to somehow uh, enlighten people and, 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 and bring them this knowledge that I was uh, uh, lucky enough to, to have received. Now, as you know, my past experience in these secret societies that we commonly call the Illuminati, in Freemason and everything, has put me in, 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 in a position that I can't be told any BS. I yeah. mean, you know, I, I, when I put on, at times, you know, my wife says, but why do you watch, for example, the news on NBC or the news, you know, Lester Roth or whatever? I watch this kind of news uh, by the enemy because I watch it with a critical view. Of course, yeah. You want to observe. You got to observe. Yeah. No, no, but I, I and I immediately understand what they are pushing here. Yeah. Then and, and, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. laugh and I think it's 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 hilarious. Yeah. Unfortunately, then you know, or CNN, the same can be watched. But I mean, it's just like. What are these people? It's like Trump yesterday when he was interviewed by Tiger Carlson. He said, you know, MSNBC is, is, is MSND, DNC or whatever. It's almost unwatchable because, and it is almost unwatchable. But I'm sure that he does, like me, watch it at times simply because it gives him an idea of what these people are really pushing. And it is, at least for my experience at the moment, the first time that I see really. America being led astray in a way that uh, might push us toward a civil war. And that is, I think it's coming. I, Leo, I think it's inevitable. I, I don't think, I think that the sheep will comply and the people like us will not comply. And, you know, let's face it. They have driven us to this undivided. This is what they want. They want internal strife because the internal strife will allow them to implement whatever it is they're going to do with their digital, like you could say, call it gulag, their digital currency, their digital reset, whatever it is where, you know, everybody is now on a social credit system, a score system. They don't have, you know, people like me and you making money in different ways. That's what they want. So to me, it's ultimately coming down to that, which is what we think we're making a stand, but it's like they're laughing behind closed doors saying, yeah, go ahead and make your stand and we're going to finally shut the door on your asses. Yeah, they can eventually shut the door, but uh, there is also, and, and this I keep on repeating during all my books, the fact that we were promised in any case a different outcome 2,000 right. years ago. That's we right. see that the mark of the beast is coming. We see that all the evil that was predicted uh, was coming, especially us Christians uh, from uh, the book of Revelation, everything yeah. is materializing in front of us. But we also know that around the corner there is the possibility of the return of uh, the Messiah, of Jesus, uh, the arrival of the Messiah for the Jews because uh, they never accepted him the first time. But <laughs> this, uh, this whole thing, will eventually have a positive outcome for those for sure. people who are, though, available to fight now and to sacrifice everything for their beliefs. Because right. there is not going to be any jumping on the bandwagon. No. Once you are basically microchipped or you are in any way... So vaxed, triple vax, quadruple vaxed, 10 times vaxed, you're done. You're done. You're done, and at that point, uh, what are you going to do? I mean, at that point... Uh, <laughs> Nothing. 
nothing. So, You're going to eat bugs and like it. Yeah, and that's it. So we instead, you know, I might uh, die doing what I like. I'm the same do. way. You, d- you have to be willing to die. Yeah. You have to be willing to die. But you have to be willing to really give the ultimate sacrifice for your idea. And this is a concept that for modern man, it was a concept that was actually quite familiar to the founding fathers, to the people right. who fought the revolution, right. who, who fought the wars, to, to, to give us what we have today. But That's it's not right. familiar to the modern man who lives, you know... On TikTok. Compromises, TikTok. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, we have the Super Bowl. Okay, Uber, what's Uber next? Eats, no, Uber Eats and uh, what's the other one? Uh, DoorDash. <laughs> DoorDash. So it's, 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 it's all okay as long as we can just uh, carry on this, uh, this way of life that is becoming more and more, of course, compromised. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and I just hope that more people wake up. But having said that, there is also the demonstration uh, from the pandemic that most people don't wake up and that That's most right. people are yeah. led to do mistakes over and over again. Yeah, they're led to, it's like leading, they're led to the slaughter. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I mean, you know, if they shut us down again here in the next couple of months, you're either going to comply or you're not going to comply. And it's thankfully, not a novelty. It's not yeah. a novelty. People, right. people have to understand now that they have to detach from the immediate events that are because events like this, uh, suppose uh, uh, new lockdowns, okay, might occur more and more in the future, more right. and more. So what you're going to do? You're going to focus every time on a single event and say, oh, okay. Yeah. Now we're gonna, uh, no, you have to think about it like, okay, the system is doing what they said they will be doing. We will be doing what we are going to be doing, right. which is an alternative. That's right, which is not connected to the system. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you're right. It's going to be communities that will form either in the mountains or in the, you know, in the wilderness or in the swamps or somewhere off the smart city grids. And we'll all be together. And, you know, it's true. You know, like minds will find each other. And, you know, hopefully, as you said, Yeshua, Jesus. Because, you see, I the concept of egregore that you mentioned earlier can be adopted also for the people who have positive intentions. Absolutely. And a positive egregore, uh, you know, just like the prayers of a church create a positive egregore. And we need to do that by praying for our future and the future of our families, but also connecting with, uh, with other people who maybe have a different know-hows from us. You know, they will be the doctor, they will be the engineer, they will right. be the, in a community, there will be people doing all kinds of jobs. Yeah. But uh, that, that was uh, really the, the idea that we had with the late Jordan Maxwell before he died yep. and before he passed away. He, he, he wanted to put together a community of that kind. And it's sad that they went way too soon, but the idea is the right idea. Yeah. And honestly, Leo, you know, we can talk off air. I, I, there are already people putting these communities together. You know, the guys in, um, I forget right now in California, um, their name escapes me. It doesn't matter, but, um, there are groups right now putting these communities together because they see what you see and what I see and what we know is coming. So yeah, we just have to line them up. Well, listen, man, I really, truly appreciate you coming on the podcast today. As always, it's been another profound show. So for all you ladies and gentlemen who support, obviously the Jay Campbell podcast, support the amazing individuals. Leo has now, I think the first guy who's been on the Jay Campbell podcast four times. Uh, go it's it's my honor. And I hope that I will be able to, to bring you some Five, other, the, four times, right? Yes. Uh, to right. bring more to the to the discussion the next time. Exactly. After I go back in what the alchemist used to call your athanor, your alchemical kind of uh, you, you are shaping yourself inside the, what is basically uh, almost like an oven. You are uh, cooking something, you know? Right. And right. I think uh, at the moment, first of all, we have to think about our connection with God. We have to think about Always. our family's connection with God and how we are going to say no to all this imposition and to keep also always a watchful eye on the younger people yes. who seem to be the weaker ones, who seem to be complying way too much these days. It's crazy. Because yeah. Our generation, uh, Jay, seems to be a little bit maybe more aware. We are. Um, yeah, no, I, I say that every day. I say I feel like Generation X is like the was was the first 
when we arrived on the scene, we were the ones that were resistant and also aware. And it seems like the boomers, they're so brainwashed by television. And then the young people are so brainwashed by the internet that they're, they're, they're compliant. They're yeah. compliant. Yeah. You know? we, we were in that in between kind in of between. thing, you know, where the TV was almost fading their, yeah. their enormous influence from the fifties. And then at the same time, the internet was only starting in Not the early nineties. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we kind of got the, the start of it, but we didn't, you know, think uh, it might become the only, f- you know, nowadays for them is a way of life to just get up and go online. That's, it. That's literally, it's yeah. exactly. And the old people, as you know, they just sit there with the TV on all day and go to bed with the TV on at night. <laughs> so maybe our generation, our generation X, as, 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 as they call it, or whatever you want to call it, uh, but, I mean, in any case, we might have a role because a lot of people have been critical about our generation. Right, right. We were not, you know, born in the war. Right, we, not, right, uh, right. we didn't witness all the hardships of the post-war period. Right. So a lot of times people said, well, you were lucky, you know, you grown up. In, I mean, I, I, I was actually lucky. I mean, growing in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, and, same. And, and becoming successful when I was at Echo Producer and, in, in the 90s and stuff, and I was doing more. It was it was great. But at the same time, when I was in the 90s, because I was initiated in 1993, as you know, in the Illuminati of the New World Order and information, I started to see things differently. Yeah. And I started to go around the people of my, of my generation to tell them the dangers. They didn't yeah. want to listen. Yeah. So now I think they are realizing they are. But we, we don't have all that time for the younger people to realize no. this in 20 or 30 years. It will be too late because you will be no. at that point with the cyber knocking on your door or robot and you will be simply uh, forced into compliance by this system. So that is uh, embracing a technology as the supreme god. But yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. Jay, as usual, I, of course, invite all our viewers to go to my website, leozagami.com, for all my latest articles, for the links to all my latest books, or uh, just go on Amazon and you can uh, get Confessions of an Illuminati, Volume 9, which uh, is, I think, uh, at the moment, my most important book. Yeah, I, I, I echo it. I've read all of your books. I think of maybe a couple of the early ones I didn't. I, I, I but I've read at least at least eight of your books. Eight, actually, I think I've read pretty much all of them. I have them all over my closet. I mean, in my in my uh, I can't call it a bookcase. Jesus, my mind is melted. But again, Leo, I love and appreciate you. Thank you for coming on. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, support Leo. Purchase his books. Purchase the newest one, which is Confessions of an Illuminati, Volume Nine. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.